Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Here we are again. Ministering the true grace of God to the hearers. I thank God that he enabled me and called me and put me into the ministry, ministry of grace. Praise God. Thank you, Father. May God bless the word again to your hearts, brothers and sisters. Because we are in a very serious and sober time. And that's what the grace of God does. It teaches us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And remember I said godliness is, is, is to help us in this present time and in the, the life to come. In this life and the one to come. And then, you know, even John went on to say, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So that's one way to gauge your, your, uh, where you're at in the spiritual realm is how your soul prospers and how you're, how you're, how you're doing in your health. Because I do that a lot. I, all of a sudden, if something starts happening in my body, I start questioning, all right, Lord, where am I, where, where am I being disobedient? Because like David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. That's what afflictions are all about, is to bring us back and correct us. Period. Hey, he was afflicted. Jesus Christ was afflicted. Why? Because he's right on the verge of disobedience. And because he was because of that, God had to keep him in line. He learned obedience by the things he suffered, people. And that's how we learn obedience. By the things we suffer. But that's like I, I just closed out that last message. For you have perverted the words of the living God and of the Lord of host our God. What a profound way that Jeremiah entered that. And that's what I actually told Ralph to his face one time uh, about how he was perverting the very word of God. All right. Now I'm going to get into where we're at here. We're in the uh, time frame now of we're in the midst of the last 45 days. That Ralph's there. Remember now what it said in Jeremiah 23. Who said that God said they said? This is what God said, but he didn't say it. They, they, they talk out of their own vain heart. Uh, you can read Jeremiah chapter 23. Line it up with what I'm going to be playing you right here. And see if, see if this is not the truth about the perversion of Ralph Stair and James Rice and others that are giving vent to this kind of delusion. Well, it, 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 like I said, though, that's God's purpose he has created the wicked for the day of evil and that's why he, he has actually created and made men like Ralph Stair, James Rice and others so others may fear that's the whole point so others may fear and take heed praise God all right let's listen to what Ralph said about the last 45 days which was supposed to start acting I believe was at the beginning of uh, August a month ago so I just want to read. I want to read it. Now, will you go again? I'll help them out. Yeah, yeah, help them out. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection. No, that's Brother Peter. I believe he was up in the balcony at that time running the board when he was, uh, when he, when he was, reading those scriptures like that. I, I mentioned before, I, I thought he was sitting next to me. But I think he was up and running the board at that time because you could, you could hear his voice at a distance. Unless they had the mic turned way down, uh, which is possible. But uh, anyways, listen to, listen to, Peter's the one reading the scriptures here of Ralph. And then watch how Ralph twists and perverts. It says that he hears, he hears God like Jeremiah said he didn't. And went on to the holy city and appeared on to many. many. Now, we heard something this morning. We heard the, the vision of Tommy Hicks. And the Lord told me when those bodies, those dead, are going to come out. As we begin the last 45 days, those dead in Christ are going to be up here. And they're going to be the strength. We're going to watch and see Simon and all these... The dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, wait a minute. You hear what he said now? That still small voice talked to him now and told him. That should have happened last month. All right? It didn't happen because it was a lie. It was a, it was a vain imagination out of his own heart. 
Uh, but that did not happen, okay? Um, let me see if I can do this. So to main, ma maintain my integrity, you know, I would always say, and I still do, standing fast with you, prophet. Yeah. All right. He's standing fast with him, prophet. You hear that now? That's James Rice. He's standing fast. Now, why, why? Evidently, he's not standing too fast with him because that should have happened uh, uh, at least three weeks ago. All right, maybe whatever, but uh, all right, and uh, let me add that one there. Okay, okay, that's good. I can do these. This is gonna be great because uh, I can add all these to the media player, and that way I can continue like this. Yep, there they are. Perfect. Thank you, Father. Okay. What I'm doing here is I'm adding the uh, James Rice ones to the media player so I don't have to change over on VLC, my other player, for uh, Ralph here. All right, now listen now. Remember how James Rice, I'm standing with the prophet. Here's what, here's what. Now, remember now, James Rice was the one that I think he said, uh, well, when you say, Brother Stair says what the Bible says, let's say it in righteousness. That's exactly the way I'm talking is, is I'm saying what Ralph said in righteousness, okay? Now, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Listen, listen to him, to me. Not yeah, the Word of God. Right listen to Ralph. Now, they're alive and remain. Listen to the wording. And the dead in Christ arise first, then we. They're, they're, they're part of the we now. Yeah. Then we which are alive and remain. See, now he don't finish that scripture. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It doesn't say anything about jumping around for 45 days. That's not what the Word of God says. But see, he didn't finish it. Now listen, listen here. Now listen. They're all... <laughs> And with great power gave him witness of the resurrection of the dead. Oh. Now, Ralph Stair, according to his own lying, vain imagination, should have been a witness of that resurrection a few weeks ago. Because we're well into the 45 days he was talking about, prophesying about right here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't know. <laughs> now, you see, all I, now you, if, you, if the Holy Spirit does not tell you what I just said to you is the truth, then there's nothing I can say to you. I sat over there and he just, I heard that still, small voice. All right, James. Remember now, Mr. Rice, a perverter of God's word, just like Ralph, his mentor. This is what James said the other day about... Uh, Standing fast with the prophet. That's one of the things that the prophet said there, James. So to main, ma maintain my integrity. All right. You know, I would always say, and I still do. All right. Standing fast with you, prophet. Yeah. And I don't what? know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purposed to stay to the end. It's coming. All right. He said, all right, now, did you hear that? Okay. He, uh, he, now, he should be standing fast with the prophet. About what the prophet said there. I'm staying fast with your prophet. Now listen to what he says though about uh there there now, as far as you can see, that was Ralph Stair declaring the end of the matter. That was the end of the matter, what you heard there of the resurrection at the last forty five days, and then Jesus Christ was coming at the end of the forty five days. Okay? And I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purposed to stay to the end. Now, wait a minute. He don't know the end of the matter, but he's purposed to stay to the end. See, I'm telling you what a profound liar this man is. James Rice is a liar. He doesn't know the end of the matter when Ralph clearly said what the end of the matter was now, James. Clearly. 
that the resurrection was going to take place at the beginning of the last 45 days. That's the end of the matter. Um, wow. Let's see if uh, what this one says here, what James says about the end of the matter. This coming of Jesus is not a popular message for the world. Right. And it's going to go forth in more intensity. Yes, Lord. More comprehensively. Consequences for this gospel going you better forth believe it. with this greater intensity. Amen. With this greater coverage. Right. Greater comprehension. Isn't that something? Greater comprehension, greater intensity. You don't hear that coming from uh, in the past several weeks. There should be nothing but the uh, talking about Jesus showing up here in the next few weeks. But you don't hear that kind of stuff. All you hear is garbage, lies, perversion coming out of... Uh, James Rice and all those, and, and, and the way they've been playing the, uh, whatever they do. I don't listen to the broadcast. I have, uh, I, I, there's a uh, website called rgstare.com that puts out the profound manifestation of lies and hypocrisy that Ralph has been doing for years. And they actually put out uh, James Rice's messages. And then, uh, what I'll do is that's where I could get the message from and then actually glean the perversion that is in that the man is ministering with. And uh, it's the same spirit that Jeremiah said right at the beginning of Jeremiah 23 about the pastors. And James Rice, he's a pastor, all right, but he's exactly the kind of pastor that Jeremiah talked about. Let's listen to what James Rice said, though, about maintaining his integrity. So to main, ma maintain my integrity, you know, I would always say, and I still do, standing fast with you, prophet. Yeah. All right. Standing fast with them. They're sta they, they ain't standing fast with that revelation of the last 45 days resurrection now. Let me play that again. And then uh, I got a few more things here of uh, James talking about Ralph. If I just want to read, I want to read it. Now, will you go again? I'll help them out. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection. Remember now, this is supposed to take place here just a few weeks ago. And went ago. on to the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, now, the reason I'm saying it's supposed to happen here a few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever, however time frame you want to put it in, we're in the midst of the last 45 days according to the feast days of the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. But Ralph Stair went on after this revelation and before it for years, talked about how when he's killed by the Pope of Rome, Jesus Christ is coming within six months. After his death, he said, Jesus Christ is coming with said six months. That means that Jesus must come back by October the 3rd, 2021, according to the lying words spoken of by Ralph Stair, just like Jeremiah said in chapter 23. Now listen again here. This is, this is so profound. They should be playing this. They should have been playing this on the Overcomer broadcast for weeks up until the resurrection actually took place. Something don't smell right. Actually, it stinks to high heaven. That's why God said your prayers are an abomination to me, especially those coming out of Kennedy, South Carolina. We heard something this morning. You we did. heard the, the vision of Tommy Hicks. All right. And the Lord told me when those bodies, those dead are going to come out. Now, the vision of Tommy Hicks had nothing to do with what he's talking about. You could go read the vision of Tommy Hicks. It has zero to do with what he's saying right here. As we begin the last 45 days, All those right. dead in Christ are going to be up here. All right. Wait a minute now. They, like I said, they should have been playing this revelation, this profound witness of God, of the resurrection, for weeks and months after Ralph's death to the coming of the Lord 
which they proclaimed at one time it was supposed to be this month. Which it isn't, but they were, they, whatever. Now, you watch how they're changing, they already changed their tune. They're, 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 in, they're in some kind of a key, all right. But it's not the key of C or Christ. It's the key of S. S as in Satan. And they're going to be the strength. We're going to watch and see Simon. And all these, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, that's when you heard that man best out of the Bronx or wherever he's at in New York. He, 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 they've been playing his phone calls. Oh, my God, Brother Stair said this. That guy's a, what up? Anyways, he, he's, a, he's a false witness, best out of the Bronx or wherever he's at in New York. He's a false witness of the very word of God. But he's a very credible witness for the lies of Ralph Stair. And they're, they're actually playing this guy. Uh, when he's actually quoting, oh, yeah, we're supposed to the last 45 days, blah, blah, blah. Well, he, he best is like his father, the devil, just like Ralph Stair was. That's all there is to it. But why, why wouldn't they keep playing the, the garbage that comes out of the man's mouth? Hey, if Brother Stair was a true prophet, you don't think you think he would still be messing with Best, who 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 Ralph for years told him to get out of the city and he never did. I, I think after the uh, what does it say the second or third admonition you reject. I think that man had probably whatever who knows how many admonitions, but that's what the scripture clearly says after the second or third admonition a heretic, reject, knowing it's subverted, and sinneth being condemned of himself. Clear example. Ralph Stair at the top. Then you got James Rice, Dennis and Rose Larrabee, Mr. Best, and others. Now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me. Carefully then they're now. alive, aren't they? Listen. Now they're alive and remaining. Yeah. Listen to the wording. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we. They're, they're, they're part of the we now. Then we which are alive and remain. They're all. They're going to be there. And with great power gave him witness of the resurrection of the dead. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't know. <laughs> now, that's not the witness that God gave in his word of how the resurrection would take place, but that's the way that Ralph Stair perverted and twisted the scriptures of truth. Now, you see, all I, now you, if, you're, if the Holy Spirit does not tell you what I just said to you is the truth, then there's nothing I can say to you. I sat over there and he just, I heard that still, small voice. Yeah, you heard some kind of voice, all right, but was it the still, small voice of God? I'm going to play this here. Uh, in fact, let me go to James Rice real quick of, of him being a witness. We're the witnesses that uh, God has sent the prophet. Mm. All right. Hey, you heard what the prophet said there now about the last 45's resurrection now. And James Rice says he's a, they, they are the witnesses of God sent this lying wonder to them. To reclaim the message. Hallelujah. All right. Hey, uh, hey, James, anybody else? I I pray that somebody will. It doesn't matter. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna repent anyways. But somebody send these messages to you. Put these messages over the broadcast that you got. If you want some real live, bona fide truth being ministered to the saints and ministering true grace and true holiness to the saints of God throughout the world, put these messages up on your little Kingdom of Satan broadcast. You see, listen to what Rice said here now. And we are those that believe the message. We're the witnesses that uh, God has sent the prophet. Mm. All right. He's a witness. They are the witnesses that God has sent them. You just heard the prophet now. Last 45 days. To reclaim the message. You heard what he proclaimed about the resurrection. That should have took place a few uh, weeks ago. Although they're going to say, well, Jesus ain't coming this year. Uh, it, I, it'll be a, a while yet. The man, I'll get to that part where James writes another perversion of his lies and his spiritual hypocrisy in detail coming up here when I get to the thunders. But let's let's focus on what Ralph said about the last forty-five days.
the resurrection supposedly should have taken place already. And what what this this uh, at the last came two false witnesses. And we are those that believe the message. We're endeavoring to stand fast in that. Not yeah, they're endeavoring to stand fast in that. That they believed the message? Well, they didn't believe what, what Ralph said about the uh, resurrection, did they? Because it should have taken place already, according to Ralph. All right. Here's what Ralph said here. Let's listen to what Ralph said. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go here now. Uh, here, here's, here's another thing that, that James said just recently now. Listen to what he says here. One thing is evident. And Brother Stair is preaching and teaching. He uh, believed that he would not be with us at the end. All right. Yeah, he, he's supposed to have been in that resurrection he talked about. You know that? Yeah. 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 Amen. Anybody believe that he believed that? That, Amen. that there would be a period of time that we would not have him in our midst? Right. right. Well, here we are. Right. Yeah, here they are now. But what did he say about his departure? James, what did he say about Jesus coming? James, whatever. All right. Yeah. Thank All right. you, Lord. But uh, there is something that he did knowing that. Right. You know, it's something that parents do, right. knowing that one day their children will have to go out and fend for themselves. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, listen to this analogy that he, he plays with. Remember, now, I just played... I just put on there what Ralph said about the last 45-day resurrection, how these people are witnesses and believe what Ralph said. So it's something that he did, yes, he did. knowing that he wouldn't be here. Amen. Our, all right? Yes, are we going to receive it? All right. Are we going to learn anything from, all right. you know, what he taught us, knowing Amen. that we'd be in this place? We've been listening. All right. Knowing that you'd be in that place, see? <laughs> you talk about a hypocrisy. Saying that they heard what Ralph said. All right, let's get into uh, what James said about Ralph said about the coming of the Lord and standing before the Pope of Rome. We've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet of God. Amen. Declared unto us that That's Jesus God. Christ is coming. Yes. All right, wait a minute now. Remember now, he said, we've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet of God who has declared unto us that Jesus Christ is coming. But how is, did Ralph say Jesus Christ is coming? I'll get to. We have a few people here at candidates who believe that Jesus Christ is coming. We're endeavoring to maintain our integrity. Stand fast in the patient way for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Well, brothers. Now, uh, did you hear that? They're maintaining their integrity, and they're waiting. Then, like I said, the resurrection should already happen because, according to Ralph, let's hear what James says now about uh, Ralph, and then I'll get to Ralph what he said about what James says. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about uh, uh, the... What did he talk about? Right there, profound. He said he's going to stand before the Pope. I've been through this before. But he said he's going to stand before the Pope, but he did not want to say what Ralph said was going to happen at the hands of the Pope. And he was trying to figure out a way to get out of it. And then all of a sudden, okay, let's play that back again, uh, right from the beginning. And, and listen to that again, what James says there. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. Now watch how long it takes him to figure out, well, I better not say what he's going to stand before the Pope about. That's what he did now. Very clear to see. He talked about... Uh, talked about uh, how the Pope's supposed to kill him, and that Jesus would come six months later. What did he talk about? That's what he talked about, James. He talked about many things. Amen. See, now he had to have somebody, because he couldn't figure out what to say, then somebody popped off in the background and said, what did he talk about? And then somebody goes, many things. Yeah, he talked about many things. Well, here's one of the many things that he talked about that you said you're a witness and stand fast with the prophet now, James. 
Okay? Here's what Ralph said. That's one thing that makes the land a prophet. God talks to him. Uh -huh. He says what God says. He's a true prophet. No, that's exactly what Jeremiah said. When I played Jeremiah 23, it was a clear description of Ralph Steer. If he says something contrary to what God says, he's a false prophet. That's it, right there. Yeah, it don't get much clearer than that. I mean, that's it. If he says something that's contrary to what God says, then he's a false prophet. Now, Ralph Steer said things so contrary to God that they never came to pass, as we'll get to in detail here right now. Same with your testimony. You testify what God says, your testimony is true. If you testify something that's contrary to what God says, then your testimony is a lie. Amen. All right. Uh, I wonder if this testimony of James Rice is a lie, just like according to Ralph said there. So to main, ma maintain my integrity, you know, I would always say, and I still do, standing fast with you, prophet. Yeah. Uh, remember now what Ralph said there about uh, a false testimony or a false witness. Let me do that again. That's one thing. That makes you land All right. Let's see if I can get it, cut it to that part. If you testify something that's contrary to what God says, then your testimony is a lie. Amen. See? That's what Ralph did. I mean, that's what James Wright did. You testify uh, something that's false, and your testimony is a lie. Let's hear what James said. We're the witnesses that uh, God has sent the prophet mm. <coughs> to reclaim the message. Hallelujah. All right. And we are those that believe the message. We're endeavoring to stand fast in that. Not All right. Here's the message about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and Ralph Steer and what he talked about over the years, people. This just ain't a one-time thing that took a clip out here or there. These are things that the man constantly spoke about. But listen to this one now. Remember now, James Rice is standing fast with this kind of delusion. That's the reason why I'm able to die so easy. That's one of the things I know that God is going to make it so close to me. You know, when he told me I was going to die, he told me my age. And I got a little upset about it at first, you know, because it's very young in comparison to what people live. Now, wait a minute. Did God tell him? You remember what, remember what I said in Jeremiah now? Uh, where it says... Uh, Well, anyways, I'm going to play this. Go ahead and uh, you listen to this. All right? Listen to what Ralph says about what God told him. And I, I said, why oh, so young? He said, you don't believe what you preach? You're not going to get to 70 no how. So don't worry about retirement. You're not even going to get to 60, boy. I'm coming. Amen. Now, if you know how old I am, you know how many more years we got. The secret. <laughs> not a day goes by that I don't think about the age that God told me. God told me what age. He didn't tell me what month. He didn't tell me... Uh, what day, but he told me how old I would be when I would die. And I can tell you, it's not very far off. They're going to kill me. This Roman Catholic Church, this religious system is going to kill me. God has to have somebody who will seal this testimony with their blood. Wow. I wonder if Ralph, did Ralph seal his testimony with his blood? No. It's very clear, though. See, I'm just showing you the delusion and depths of Satan that this man has, has, has lived in. And, and then, like I said, what James Rice said about... Uh, uh, remember now, this is one thing... Hey, James, if you're listening to what the prophet said that you say you actually heard and are witness of and maintain and stand fast with the prophet... But yet, James, you said this. And I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purpose to stay to the end. One wow. Yet, I'm showing you clearly what Ralph said the end was to be. All right, here's another one now about Ralph's end. Remember, James, we don't clearly know the end. See what a liar the man is. First, he says he believes the prophet. He hears everything that Ralph Stair says. But yet, why doesn't he believe these things? Huh? 
this is what Ralph said, James, about the end, and and the time we're in right now, the uh, six month period after his death, James. You know, Jesus is going to come. Another thing I've said. After my death, within six months, and I tell you, don't plan on moving around and playing around for six months. You better be ready. You say, preacher, how do you keep saying that? Well, those are things that God told me. God said it. It is so. He told me, as I come to the end of my life, that I'd be taken or brought before the Pope of Rome, and there would then be my death. Now, whether the Pope himself orders it or someone else does it, nor whatever, when I die after my departure, Jesus will come. Now, all right. Um, this coming of Jesus is not a popular message for the world. Right. And it's going to go forth in more intensity. Yes, Lord. More comprehensively, consequences for this gospel going forth. You better mark it down there, consequences for your lives of perversion, James Rice, and others just like you. There are going to be severe consequences you are going to face very soon. With this greater intensity, Amen. with this greater coverage, right. greater comprehension. Greater comprehension? No, I'm putting greater, co God's having me put greater comprehension with greater intensity to these lives of perversion. That they, they, they're, they're changing their uh, method of operation almost continually. Remember what I said, though, in, in Jeremiah 23, it said, Behold, I'm there against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith, or God told me, God told me, or prophesy false dreams. That's exactly what you hear. And then cause the people to err by their lies and their likeness. Yet God said, I have not sent them. Let's go on with what Ralph said, though, about the uh, six-month thing and the Pope. Well, I don't believe that. But all I can say to you is that doesn't change my faith. I wish I hadn't said these things, but they came out of my mouth. I'm responsible for them. I will have to face the judgment on them one way or the other, and the time of that judgment is drawing nigh. The time of that judgment is now. And uh, just like I said... Judgment is going to rest upon Kennedy, South Carolina, in a profound way very shortly. It's only at God's hands and God's timing how long he's going to allow that kind of delusion to continue, a perversion. But uh, that's up to God. Let's hear now what Ralph said now. Remember now, James. Uh... Here's what James said now about the and end. I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purpose to stay to the end. One well, th he, then he must not have been listening to Ralph Stir all these years like he says he has in order to make a statement like that. He doesn't know the end of the matter. Yet, he says uh, this. We've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet of God. Amen. Declared unto us that That's Jesus God. Christ is coming. Yes. Now, here's what here's what Jesus here's what Paul uh, well said about Jesus Christ coming there, James. One of the first things God told me, he said, I'm gonna send you to China, I'm gonna send you to the Soviet Union, he said, I'm gonna send you to Pope of Rome, he said, then they're gonna kill you. Then they will kill you. How do I know I'm gonna finish that? Because he let me finish the first two. Remember now, God told him. Just like I said, Jeremiah, I'm against the prophets that say they use their tongues and say, God told me. But that remember now. They've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet here, according to James. We have a few people here at Kennedy's who believe that Jesus Christ is coming. But not according to the way Ralph said. See? Daring to maintain our integrity. Stand fast in the patient way. For the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Now. Uh, I think you missed the mark by a lot. Well, they did, there's no doubt. Not think. They have missed the mark of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but we could play. Let's see if that play again. We've been listening to the voice. Okay, good. Uh, here's another thing that 
the voice you've been listening to said there, James? That's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching now, because I've told this world what God told me. He told me to be a thousand people at a gathering in South Carolina before I go. Wait a minute. All right, James, what'd you say? We've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet of God. Amen. Declared unto us that Jesus Christ is coming. Yeah. All right. And this is what he said about Jesus coming there, James. He told me six months of dead Jesus coming. Six months of his death, Jesus is coming. You hear that? You hear that, James? So you mark my death by the death of the sign. Hey, not only James Rice, but all you other lying devils out there, you hear that? This is the proclamation of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ now. Pretty, pretty profound clarity. Don't let nobody fool you. God uses death as a sign. Right, sure does. He uses death of Christ on the cross as a sign. Man, to preach a message like me, it, it always takes the death of the testator to put the strength to his testimony. See? And that's why you see that title up there above my head, the death of the testator to put strength to Ralph Terror's hypocritical lying witness of the resurrection and the coming of Jesus Christ, period. And then you got men like James Rice and those that he's, it's like a little football rally over here with James Rice, right? We have a few people here at Canada's who believe that Jesus Christ is coming. Yeah, but today they don't believe like Ralph said what's gonna happen. He said there's going to be a thousand people at, the, at, at a gathering before he's killed by the Pope. Now remember now, God told him. See, that's the same God that's speaking to James Rice. And that's the same God that's speaking through James Rice to all those people. We're determined to maintain our integrity. Stand fast in the patient way. For the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Well, brother. Well, brother, here's what James said. Now remember now, we're talking about what James said about Ralph, this is when he first took to the lying hypocrite's pulpit in Kennedy's right after the death of Ralph Stair. He said he was going to stand before the Pope. Yep, he did. He talked about uh, uh, the, what did he talk about? Uh, this is what he talked about, James. I know it's going to be my end. God told me you're going to see the Pope. And I will see the Pope. Uh, James, does that get clear? Uh, of what he said about the Pope? Just like you said? Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. I'm going to see the Pope before I die. I will see him. How do you know that? Because God told me that. He told me seven years ago, he said, I'm going to send you to China. I'm going to send you to Russia. So are you. Then. I'm going to send you to see the Pope room. That'll be the last year. He said, when you get to the Pope, they're going to kill you. Uh, James, that's what that's what Ralph, this so-called prophet, you said you believed. That's what he said. Okay. Let's listen to James again. Brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about uh, uh, the. What did he talk about? He talked about many things. Amen. Well, I played for you there, Mr. James what Ralph said about the Pope of Rome, that you couldn't, come, you, you couldn't talk about it, you still can't talk about it, which is fine. Let God be true, and every man like James and Ralph be liars, period. Uh, let me play this here, and then I'm a, a, okay, now remember now, we're talking about the things that James Rice said about Ralph, how they profess that he's the last day prophet of God, and they've been listening to him and his ministering and all this. But we're talking about the perversion of the resurrection and the coming of Jesus Christ. That's the whole focus of this, these messages that I'm putting out right now, as far as Ralph and James, okay? Let no man deceive you by any means. For that coming of Jesus Christ shall not come until there come a falling away like Ralph and James first and the man of sin be revealed, which was revealed in Ralph Stair and is now being revealed in James Rice. But listen to what uh, Matt James said about not knowing the end of the matter. And I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purposed to stay to the end. Okay. 
You don't know the end of the matter, but he's purpose to stay till the end, right? What about what Ralph said about what he's going to do for the end of the matter? When I'm ready, I'll do like Paul. I'll let you all know. I will. I'll say I'm ready now. Hey, right, James, did, did he say that? Uh, evidently, you, you must not have been amongst the uh, chosen elect to hear uh, Ralph say he's ready. He didn't even come close to talking like this before his death. Not even close to it. He said, not even, co whatever. Listen to what he, how he pops off in his, in his uh, blatant boasting and pride here. And folks have been listening to me the last couple months to hear me. You already hear me starting to say that. You've already heard me start to say, I'm about ready now. Now, this is 2008. 15, was it, uh, 13 years ago. Good marking number for Ralph, 13. 13 years ago, and actually I stopped it on the 13th second of this message. Wow, how profound. How profound is that? See, I'm telling you, God uses numbers, and he really puts some numbers in, in front of me a lot to show me that he is with me. He encourages me in that sense. Okay? I'm about ready now. Got one more journey. He's about ready now. Got one more journey. One place to go. One more. Off comes my head. All right. Off comes his head. See, everything the man said, it's just like I said in Jeremiah. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues to say, God says. And after my departure, after my departure, Jesus coming. After my departure. You say, I don't believe that. Be my guest. That's right. I don't believe it. Not one bit. And I think it's very clear to you saints of God out there. Uh... about that. Now I'm going to play one more clip here from James Rice uh, talking about how he, he, now all these things I played about Ralph and what he proclaimed loud and clear that God told him when Jeremiah said he didn't. We've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet of God. Amen. All right, let me play something else that, that uh, this is how Ralph talked about the holy feast days of God. Uh, if we're coming to a, a feast of trumpets, that could very well be the prelude to the last one. Now that's the spirit that's on the people at the Overcome Ministry right there. Very clear. Very clear. Come on, you're sitting underneath the most profound preacher of the age, and, and that's how he talks to the people there? And they, they have not even learned how to grow in the great, because grace and knowledge and the truth of God's word was never profoundly ministered in their very lifestyle, period. They're, Ralph and James are perfect witnesses. But listen, listen, what I remember now, let me play that again, and then I'm going to close with James Rice and what he says. Uh, if we're coming to a, a feast of trumpets, that could very well be the prelude to the last one. See, now that was just a, a, a few years ago when he taught last year, I think it was, that he talked like that. Okay? Prelude to the last one because he knew that God told him that the feast days when they line up in September that Jesus was coming. And you know what our thing he said here before his death? <coughs> he said, if Jesus doesn't come this year, it will have to be another 11 years before all the feast days line up according to Ralph. You see, whatever. Let's listen to James again in closing this out of this part about the Pope six months after Ralph's death. Jesus is supposed to be here to actually this coming up, few weeks coming up here that we're approaching now, and uh, the depths of Satan that are actually still working in men like James Rice and the spirit of Ralph Stair. We've been listening to the voice of the last day prophet of God. Amen. Lord. Declared unto us that That's Jesus Christ is coming. Yes, Lord. We have a few people here at Kennedy's who believe that Jesus Christ is coming. Glory but not according to Ralph. 
So they don't believe Je the, that Jesus Christ is coming, period. You don't, you don't, you don't ride the coattails of a liar and say that you believe his lies, and yet you don't believe his lies. And you say that, well, you know, whatever. We're going to get into another aspect here of the thunders here very shortly because it's just so profound of what James Rice said the other day about the thunders. But I think this is very clear, people. And uh, I hope you get a clear witness of the lies, the deception, and perversion that continues to go out at the Overcomer Ministry with James Rice at the helm, with Dennis Ahab Larrabee and Rose Jezebel Larrabee controlling the strings of the puppet James Rice and others that are there in Kennedy, South Carolina. Okay? We are endeavoring to maintain our integrity, stand fast in the patient way for the true coming of Jesus Christ. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before. All right. So let's, let's just close with this one here about him standing fast with the prophet. All those things you heard me play the last 40, 50 minutes are the voice of the lying wonder of the age, Ralph Stair, and what God told him. Just like I started out with Jeremiah 23. And it's amazing. Jeremiah 23 and verse 31. Behold. I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, God saith. So to main, ma maintain my integrity, you know, I would always say, and I still do, standing fast with you, prophet. Yeah. Uh, what prophet is he standing fast with? It sure ain't Ralph's there. He's not standing fast with him. You heard me all the things I said, how Ralph proclaimed and declared how Jesus was coming, proclaimed and declared how the resurrection was to take place at the beginning of the last 45 days, which it should have occurred several weeks ago. He's not standing fast. He's a liar. Period. James Rice is a liar. It is of his father, the devil. Period. I don't think it gets much clearer than that, people. So I just ask God again to bless this word to your hearts. May he bring you out of this, this strong delusion you're under. Now, it could be that he'll leave you in that delusion. That whatever. It's in God's hands. He's the one that controls all things consist by him. Just like I read there, all things are by him, for him, and consist by him. So if, if it's God's will to have you in that kind of a delusion, that's his will. It's not, he's not willing that any should perish, but he will turn anybody over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient like they're, like, like they're putting out there in Kennedy, South Carolina at this present time. So, uh, as I mentioned before, like, like uh, Brother Emmanuel Johnson and his testimony and others, may God bless the word to your hearts, the very pure word. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That means that only the people of God are going to have the words as David said, I have hid my, thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So that's what we need to do. We need to have the word hid in our hearts that we will not sin against God. And that we know the line between truth and perversion in this time we live in. So God bless the word to your heart. Deliver you from any stronghold that Satan may have you bound in by confession and forsaking the delusion or the stronghold, and crying out for mercy, and God will deliver you. Because that's how I had to, I remember the born-again experience. I couldn't tell you how it happened except how it happened. That God, all I remember doing was, forgive me, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Deliver me. Help me. Save me. And God did it. Praise God. And he's still doing it today. Keeping me in his love. Just like he admonished us. In Jude, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Well, God bless you. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Till we meet again. Amen.